The Money Show. Personal Finance. So Warren Ingram, if this time, 2015, you were, you were a grumpy bunny at the end of 2015. <laughs> you really were. Ntlanta Nene had been fired. But the consequence of Ntlanta Nene being fired, it's taken two years for sanity to prevail. But now we've got a more markets-orientated uh, president of the ANC. He's got some, some tough battles to fight, but those are his battles. And we end 2017 on a far better footing than we ended 2015, and certainly a far better footing on which we ended 2016. I'm a happy uh, end of 2017. -er. How about you? I am. No, I think I am. I think I think we're in a much better position than we were three months ago. You know, and and six months ago, and as you said, uh, d definitely two years ago. And, and you're right. I think I think that's as close as I've come to losing my rag on on radio. Was was <laughs> no, that no, first? No, 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 no. You lost your rag. You lost. You, you lost every sense of decorum. You was, I mean, and, and I mean, you, 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 the. Your lips, which are normally a soft rosy red, and forgive me for noticing, um, had, the, had a white outline of somebody who had just been robbed. Um, had the, you had this, and we had been robbed. And we had. The country had been robbed. And uh, in retrospect, however, one looks at it, and that was the catalyst for the extraordinary change that we've seen over, over the last couple of days. And um, thank goodness. Yeah, absolutely. Thank goodness so, um, that, that, that you know, sanity has prevailed at last. I think the, you know, the milk's been spilt. And and I guess now um, it's human nature to to then just say, well, this is where we are today, and and, and let's let's look forward and, and move forward. And I think that's probably a healthy place to be right now. And I agree with you; it, it, we are in a much better position than we were. Uh, th there are lots of buts that that we have to put into of all of this. But but I think for for the moment, um, you know, watching that that, that result, I, I can tell you, um, you know, major sense of relief just to see uh, you know some level of sanity uh, prevailing there, which was which was fabulous to see. It, it tells me, uh, you know, you know that, um, that you know that our country always veers to the brink of collapse and then somehow finds its way back again. I mean, there were eighty less than eighty votes in it. If eighty people had voted differently, um, we'd ha we'd have the radical economic transformation. Brigade, whatever that means, I'm still not convinced that the ANC itself knows exactly what it means. But um, I, we would have had a, a far different economic outlook. The rand, instead of going from to 1252, may have gone to 1452, with all of the consequences of that happening at the beginning of this week. Instead, we have a rand at 1270, uh, stronger than it started the year, and uh, and there is a chance um, if we don't blow it of a of a better year economically as we go into 2018. I think that's that's quite right, and you know, um, there's probably, I mean, hopefully we've we've hit the bottom, and and you know, we've we've stopped digging, and um, and now we, you know, we, we as a country can can take a constructive step forward. And it's, what's really interesting for me is, it doesn't take a lot for business people um, and and definitely markets, investment markets, to 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 change sentiment in a really radical way, you know, to to really almost 180 degree, 80 degree turn from from being really negative and you know and watching immigration etc. you know numbers rising and, and money leaving the country in, in in floods to 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 kind of switching completely you know to saying okay this is this is a place we can be i think if you look at the optimism uh, around zim with all the still really obvious problems that it has you know and, and the question marks about the the political um you know regime that is there still to this day look at how how people um are, are looking at that favorably and i think you know a company like tongart if you just look at the the impact on tongart share price from you know with the resolution in zim uh, just tells you that you know the, the, the whole investment climate here can change really quickly if um and I think to, to me it's a big if. The first six months of next year, we need to see quite a few things uh, happening very quickly. And, and I think we could be, find ourselves on an incredibly positive footing very quickly. Uh, yeah, uh, and there are lots of ifs, buts, and maybes in that. And that is the, the nature of investing, and that is the nature of the world of investing, is that one can never predict the future with any degree of clarity. So one has to make investment decisions based on uh, scenarios or best guesses or whatever it might be. But one has to keep on keeping on. Um, regardless of the environment and, and, and making the best possible investment choices with the available information. So what does one do? 
Okay, so so I almost want to just give you a couple of bullet points that I'm looking at uh, for, for for what I want to see next year, and 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 then the decisions that I would make around those. Um, and I think as a starting point, just just the rand the rand dollar. That's a, I mean, it's an obvious question to talk about, um, and 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 it's a big point for for most investors. And and to me, I think you know I've been fairly consistent saying you know that when the rand is is at thirteen rand fifty or below below that, so stronger than that, um, and it is, it's certainly there now. Then if you don't have enough money um, invested overseas you need to use that opportunity to send money out and I, and and so that level i won't adjust downwards now in other words i won't say okay let's look at rather at 13 rand or below to start sending money out i still think 13 rand 50 is a, a, a good level to to use so so for now for people who don't have sufficient capital invested overseas then then that's the first point 13 rand 50 keep watching that i think it's a it's a good level to 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 monitor uh However, you know, just just talking about overseas markets for a second, I think, I mean, I've, I think we've been pretty, you know, we've chatted about it quite a bit in the last few weeks. The international markets, especially the U.S. market, are expensive, um, or is expensive, and and so you know, don't don't expect that you're suddenly going to go from the JSE uh, and go, you know, go into the U.S. market and expect, uh, you know, fabulous returns over the next five years. I think at at valuations as they are now in America, you can expect returns in, in the U.S. market to be, you know, in the in the single digits, you know, below ten percent a year. Single digits in dollar terms or single digits in rand terms? In, in dollar terms, in I think you know. What, yeah. yeah to, to me once you send money out you know constantly relating it back uh to to what the exchange rate does here doesn't really help you you know you've got to say um I, i've got to judge my investment overseas in in um in its basket of currencies and against its own inflation rates and you know so so to get nine percent a year for example in america where inflation rates might be you know around one or two percent a year that, that that's still a very good return to get you know it's a real return just for argument's sake of seven percent a year and and that's a comfortable, very nice return to have. But I just think you need to know that getting 12 or 20 percent a year, as, as investors are used to getting at the moment from the American market, that's not going to carry on. Um, and I think we actually saw it here. You know, it was a, a, a very nice illustration of, of what happened. You know, when the JSC almost flatlined for for three, you know, nearly four years. Uh, and I, and I would, I really wouldn't be surprised to see the same in America. And and it's got a history of doing that. You know, from the year 2000. Uh, to to the end of t uh, or the beginning of 2010, you know the, the the U.S. market did absolutely nothing. You know, I mean, if you, you just got zero return over that that long period of time, so I'm not saying that you, you should expect zero from the U.S. markets over 10 years, but just expect that leaving here, you know, um, and 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 diversifying, which is rational, uh, don't expect suddenly to get those returns that we've seen over there. Um, I mean, that makes that diversification argument really hard because we and and it's a South African disease when the rand is depreciating. People can't wait to get money out of the country. When it starts strengthening, people hoard money at home and decide, oh, no, it's only, it can only get stronger. That's the way we wire it. It's, it's either disaster or it's good times. Um, and we you know we hit the best levels on the currency in nine months on, on Monday night briefly, and we're not too far off those levels. And that's going to lead to some optimism, perhaps some over-optimism about the state of the nation. So, so just two, two, two comments there. One is a very personal one. Is I, I, I took a bet at the beginning of 2016 with with a friend that the rand would be at 1250 by the 31st of December uh, this year. So well, well was, you were you were wrong, weren't you? Because it went to 1252, which is not 1250. So yeah, you were no, wrong. Well, okay. well, no, 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 no. I've still got a few days. <laughs> 31st of December. Yeah. So, so just for those currency traders out there, if you want to throw a dog a bone, I'd really appreciate it. Um, but, Listen, but, one swallow doth not a summer make. <laughs> I just need to win the bet. I don't care okay. about the summer. <laughs> no, but but I think. Um, you you know, for, for for that to guard against that 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 excessive emotion in in this case maybe over optimism. What I would say is every every investor once they've started to build up a, a base of money, I think you, you need to have about a quarter of your of your investment assets out of the country. That's a that's a minimum, and so that should be your guiding your guiding principle. I think uh, once you have more than half of your money out of the country, I think it's you know that, that you probably could say that you you might have too much money then overseas. But so so for all all of us that range should be between a quarter to to a half and so that that should be the nice benchmark that you use to to guide yourself when you make investment decisions if you're sitting in um, in a position today where you've got absolutely no money invested overseas and and the rand's looking at uh, um, like it is at the moment at these uh, favorable rates then then the decision should be simple i need to start building up my overseas allocation okay. 
and it's not a it's not a bet. And, and just you know, just for for people who you know start gonna gonna start sending me tweets to say I'm an Afro pessimist or whatever, that's not the case. Otherwise, I wouldn't be here. This is a simple, rational diversification of your money to get exposure to markets and and um, economy economies that that we just can't get here. And, and to me, you know, I still would be looking very favorably at the um, at the other big emerging markets uh, around the world. I still think those are great engines of of, of growth um, for, for investors. Any questions for Warren Ingram this evening as we close off 2017 and we prepare to launch full ball into 2018? Anything to do with your money? Anything to do with your concerns, your fears, your hopes, your aspirations, your optimism, your pessimism, whatever it might be? 21 446 Questions, comments, observations for Warren Ingram this, anything, this evening? Anything to do with your money? The Money Show. Personal Finance. Warren Ingram is uh, talking personal finance this evening. Uh, Graham. Oh, good question. Graham. Oh, 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 oh. Such a good question that he went beep, beep, beep. He was swearing so hard, Warren Ingram, that we had to beep him. Um, oh, no. How do you protect yourself when a Steinhoff happens? Well, yeah. Um, 90% value destruction in the value of, of Steinhoff shares. Three weeks ago, it was one of the 10 biggest companies on the JSE. Now it's barely in the top 100. It's calamitous on every, every, every level. Absolutely. And, and, um, I, I think the short answer is you can't you can't protect yourself. You know th- there are a few uh, you know talking heads out there that are you know now you know really clever after the fact about uh, about how that this was so obvious that you you know you, anyone could have seen Steinhoff was a fraud or, or a pyramid scheme or something like that. And and I just don't um, I I don't give credence to that at all. I think uh, you know they um, you know they they fooled I guess a lot of quality fund managers. I, I think they fooled a lot of their own staff and a lot of their their auditors etc cetera, etc. Cetera. And so, the uh, some of their own directors. Well, at least um, we hope um, the directors were fooled. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I, you know, I give benefit of, of the doubt to their non-executive directors. If you look at that board, it's you know those are those are people whose reputations are are, are taking serious knocks now, and they certainly didn't uh, you know didn't get paid the the kind of money um, you know th- that they would demand to destroy their reputations if they ever would. So so I think um, you know they fooled a lot of people, and and so to me the, you know the protection against an event like a standoff would be uh, you know very simple it's you just have to have your eggs spread across quite a few different baskets when it comes to to investing in shares um and and make sure that you that, that you have a nice um you know diversity of of styles of investing as well so i mean it's no you know no no secret i've always been a fan of 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 index investing and so you would have owned that um you know that share would have been one of the big shares that you would have owned in uh, in, in your portfolio if you um you know if you were an index investor and, and you would have taken a knock and it, it would be painful but the point is that you wouldn't just own three or four shares you would own at least 40 or 80 um you know different shares and and if you were in a diversified portfolio of investments in other words cash bonds property shares local and international then your knock was probably only around you know one or, or one and a half percent and and still a big knock i'm not saying it's not a, knock, a loss but that's not um you know that's not a 90 percent loss on your on your investment um people will be in the minority who will who will express this opinion but it's an opinion i've heard you see the jsc you can't trust the private sector i'm not going to buy shares because you see what happened at steinoff and the whole market is just gambling yeah, and and you know that that obviously gains volume when when things like this happen. Unfortunately, we've had you know we had African Bank and now, um, and and now we've got Steinoff, and and that's a, you know that's a that's I guess people are entitled to their to their views. Uh, you know if you contrast that with with however many shares you know, you know that have gone up many hundreds of times, uh, you know then that view just doesn't hold. You know just the the the, the facts don't um, don't bear that that out at all. You know you look at the people that that haven't. Just generated sort of fictitious wealth over time you know they've generated real money and real growth over you know many decades it, it just it, that's just not true i mean i think you know we, we've talked about you know family-owned businesses before you know if you just bought psg and and got all the you know associated companies with that you'd be worth a heck of a lot of money even if you happen to own staff yeah. as well no absolutely i mean let's talk let's not waste any time talking about that i was just being facetious because that i mean that's the sort of response i get people emailing me and uh, and commenting on twitter and all of that sort of stuff and i'm glad you've just reinforced it the jc is ending the year about 15 16 percent better than it was at the beginning of the year it's the first year in four 
before where we've seen any worthwhile gains on the investment markets. For investors who, for people who don't have um, a lot of money and who are wary of going offshore and don't understand the, the process of it and uh, feel like they don't have enough money, is the, is the JSE an awful place to, uh, to, to, to put your 300 rand a month, your 500 rand a month direct debit? No, definitely not. It, it is a good place to to put your money. I think, um, and certainly if you're doing it by a debit order, then 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 I would say by all means carry on. You know, that's it's a form of phasing your money into an investment, and and I like that very much. So so I think that uh, I, I wouldn't be shying away from it. Uh, you know, one thing to note about the JSC, especially if you're buying, you know, the, the top forty companies, is that that most of them aren't really unfortunately, or fortunately or unfortunately, depending on your view, um, they're not really related directly to the 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 the, the health of the South Africa economy you know many of them are, are very international businesses that earn quite a small proportion of their money in in, in south africa so so i think you know it's, it's it might be um a, a you know time to kind of look at two, you know double strategy in other words putting your money in, in, an, in an index but but possibly also putting your, your your money into an actively managed unit trust as well as you know in a combination because i think um you know i think there is some good value in the jsc outside of that 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 top 40 sector you know the smaller companies that have been absolutely hammered uh, with all the negativity that we've seen, you know, those are companies that are starting to to look very attractive, and I see some of them are are shooting up um, at the moment. On, you know, based on on what happened on the weekend. Um, yeah, and, and we must be careful of over exuberance, and we've got to be careful of getting a little bit ahead of ourselves in terms of excitement. I mean, if the markets uh, the markets did more on Tuesday in terms of financial and industrial shares just in one day than they've done in the whole year, you've got to know that there is just a, a little bit of um, a little bit of FOMO in the world, and uh, and investors are, are frightened of losing out. So the rules of investing into 2018, keep investing. Um, take some money out of the country if you can at stronger uh, at stronger tra- exchange rates. Um, but don't stop investing. Julia's only regret, I think, uh, Warren, she started investing with your guidance. Uh, Julia, our super, our super saver, if you don't know what I'm talking about, facebook.com forward slash Bruce Business. Just search for Julia. You'll learn all about her really quickly. Um, 2008 happened and she cut back on a uh, on her investing and had she continued investing through the crisis she would be even better off than the what was the last tally that we saw 4.2 4.3 million rand that she's got invested already absolutely and 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 i think uh, you, know, you know she's a great example of 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 sticking with it even you know uh, you know even when times get tough she she cut back but she didn't stop which was the which was the important point there i think um, and and maybe just to those investors that have been sitting on the sidelines you know, w- w- you know riding a lot a lot of cash um you know not knowing what to do and looking at the jsc and saying you know that it's just gone nowhere for so long um, m- my comment now would be don't take those lump sums if you've built them up and commit them to to the market all in one shot you know when, when when you get back from holiday at the at the beginning of the year, t- take a measured approach, and and I think you know d- you know at least phase it in over a minimum of six months, um, and 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 feed it into the into the market if you're investing you know significant lump sums, and and um, you know possibly twelve months. You know I think we need to see what happens in the next in the first few ma- first few weeks possibly of, of next year to to make that call. So you know if the if the politics go well in the beginning of the year and and there's a big reshuffle and and Zuma gets recalled etc cetera, etc. Cetera, then you know then you can reduce the period of your phasing into to six months but if the politics look uh, look rough and it looks like a, you know we're not seeing quick change then, then take a 12 month view to to feed your capital in uh, so so i agree with you bruce don't get over exuberant i mean i think it's it's a time to be measured um you know you know not not overly optimistic and also not too pessimistic there's still a lot of those people but um but don't avoid the jsc it, it, it is a good place and does reward investors over long periods of time Warren Ingram from Galileo Capital. Happy Christmas. Enjoy your, the break that you're going to have. We'll talk early in the new year. Warren Ingram is a financial advisor. He's also a director at Galileo Capital.